Okay, time to learn web development. Let me just pull up the Odin project. That's what people told me to use. And oh my gosh, do I really need to know? This is huge. I can't possibly learn that much. Let me just look at job postings to see what they actually have listed. Uh, here's one for a junior developer. Internship unpaid. Okay, that's fine. Uh, 420 years of experience with a language that hasn't even been invented yet. What? Ugh, this is so dumb. Let me just go to YouTube. Okay, here. Fireship. I've heard of this guy. He's got a new video on this uh, this new framework. Previous JS just came out and is being adopted by every company out there because it's just like Next.js without server components. Oh wait, another video just popped up. Let me check that one out. Previous JS is dead. Allow me to introduce you to Bloat.js, a JavaScript framework that loves big bundles and it cannot lie. Oh my god, this is so confusing. Let me go see what's on Twitter, or is it Blue Sky now? Wait, no, 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 Mastodon. That's what it's called now, I think. Yeah, whatever. Let's just, okay, let's go. Oh, here's an article. A uh, four-year-old baby learns programming in three hours and builds a $30 million tech startup. God, there's no way I can compete with that. I, I give up. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you. And you may notice I'm not in my normal office. This is actually my wife's office. We just recently converted it over into a library kind of study for her. So I decided I would record a video in here. It obviously looks a lot more appealing than my normal office, and you may notice she kind of stole my chair, so that's like half my, you know, decor in my office. If you're currently trying to learn web development, you know how difficult it is to learn everything that there is out there that you need to know in order to land your first job. But you also know that creating websites now is easier than it's ever been. I mean, you can create a really performant, amazing web application with very little experience in actually building websites. And this is kind of weird that it's actually gotten much easier to build websites but learning to actually get a job as a web developer has gotten much harder. You would think they would either both get easier or both get harder. But the reason that it has both gotten easier to make websites and harder to land a job is because there are more and more tools out there that help you with building websites, things like React, new CSS features, new JavaScript features that make building websites much easier than it used to be. But now with all those extra tools, there's more that you need to learn to actually land your first job. So in this video, I'm going to kind of break it down into two different sections, talking about all the different things that are happening that are changing web development. And in the second half of the video, I want to talk about how you can actually go ahead and learn web development efficiently, kind of give you the path that you need to go down to make sure that you're going to be successful in learning web development because it's much harder than most people give it credit for. A lot of people out there, they look at web development and they kind of dismiss it as like not really software engineering or not software development. They're like, oh, if you're not building desktop applications or like a backend developer, you're not an actual real developer. But that couldn't be farther from the truth, especially as things have evolved in the web development front end space. It's gotten more and more complex and it becomes more and more difficult to learn. Now, if we rewind back to when I was first learning web development, this wasn't necessarily like decades ago. It was maybe about 10 years ago at this point that I was learning web development. Things looked so much different than they do now. And that's a very short period of time for things to change so much. I mean, back when I was first learning web development, an interview question that you might get asked in like a junior front end position is how do you center a div horizontally and vertically? Now, if you're just starting out learning web development, you may think that's a ridiculous question. That's incredibly easy to do. I mean, you have Flexbox, you have Grid. There's so many ways to do that. But when I was learning web development, Flexbox didn't exist, Grid didn't exist. The number one way that you laid out things on a page was using floats, or more likely you just used Bootstrap because that was like the one grid system that everyone used, and it kind of revolutionized how websites are built. But now, 10 years later, there's all these new features that make doing those things easier, like Flexbox and Grid, like I mentioned. So on one front, we got more features and things like CSS, and also JavaScript has added a ton of new features. When I was learning web development, there was really no distinction between JavaScript and jQuery. You just kind of learned both of them at the same time, and that's because JavaScript didn't have as many features as it does now, and it actually was very difficult to do things with just JavaScript because it didn't have all the nice features of jQuery. So you would go ahead, you'd learn jQuery, and you didn't even have to learn JavaScript, really. I mean, I know when I first learned JavaScript, I was learning jQuery. I didn't even know what JavaScript was. I was just like, okay, I'm learning jQuery and that's what you write websites in. Like that's how much jQuery was used back when I was first learning web development. So you had jQuery, which made certain things a little bit easier. And overall, it wasn't too hard to grasp because on the front end of websites, they weren't doing a lot of stuff. I mean, some websites were, 
but for the most part, if you are working in a more junior position, you probably weren't having to do crazy user interactions. There's no single page applications and stuff like that to worry about. It's just most of the work is on the back end, and then the front end has a little bit of interaction in JavaScript, but it's mostly just like small things, not super complex. Now, if we fast forward a few years after I just started learning web development, some new things start to emerge. One of them is jQuery starts to fall out of favor a bit as JavaScript adopts more and more features of jQuery, and overall, you just don't need it as much because it's easier to write things in JavaScript than ever before. CSS adds tons of new features like Flexbox, Grid, and just tons of features. It's crazy how much has come out in CSS in the last five to 10 years, but all these new features are getting added in. And then on top of that, something kind of important happens. React comes out. And I know there's things before React, there was Angular, there was Backbone and stuff like that. But React, I think, was really one of the big catalysts for pushing that component-driven development and their own system of doing things was completely different than anything that had come before it at all. I mean, writing React code was so much different than how you write JavaScript code. And that was a huge shift for a lot of people because you went from writing, you know, imperative JavaScript code, the front end doesn't do too much, you just push all your data to the server, the server gives you back information, to this idea of, you know what, let's do everything on the client. We're gonna shove everything in there and everything's gonna happen on the client. And oh, by the way, it's all declarative and you have to relearn how to write programs. That's kind of what it felt like shifting over to React. So it was a large hurdle there to jump over to React. It wasn't as hard as like learning web development from scratch, but it was a pretty big mental shift for a lot of people. Now, the nice thing with a lot of these tools like React, Angular, Vue, Backbone, and stuff like that is they weren't quite as widespread as they are now, and they weren't quite as overarching. Like they didn't cover absolutely everything. You kind of just use them to spruce up your front end a little bit, or maybe you decided to write your entire application using these tools. But again, the front end was still not as complex as it is now. You weren't just, you weren't doing so much in it but it started to get pushed more and more to the front end with introductions of things like React, and the more popular these front end frameworks became, more and more stuff got pushed to the front end instead of being pushed over to the server. So now the front end started getting bloated with more and more and more and more complex stuff until eventually in the last couple years, we kind of realized maybe this isn't the right way of doing things. You know, the server is really good at doing all these things. Why are we pushing all this down to the client? So now there's a bit of a shift in the last few years and even still currently where we're pushing more stuff back over to the server to handle different things that we were originally handling in the server and then switch back to the client and now we're switching it back over to the server again. So we're trying to go back to that more server client architecture. And with that comes a lot of frameworks that are built on top of things like React, Svelte, Vue, and Angular. And these are like a full stack framework, like Next.js is a very good example of one of these. Now, the thing that makes it really difficult is that these different ideologies of, okay, we're doing everything on the server. Oh wait, now we're doing it on the client. Oh wait, now we're doing it in between both. And oh wait, now we're changing how we do it between both. These changes happen quite quickly. I mean, there's tons of memes out there that a new JavaScript framework comes out every other day, but I also feel like a new ideology of how we actually program between the front end and the back end comes out fairly often. I mean, it seems like almost every year or two, there's a new way of doing things that completely changes what we were doing before. So it's really hard because you may be spending time learning something. Like let's say you're learning JavaScript and you spend about a year learning JavaScript and you feel like you're a really good front end JavaScript developer and boom, now all the jobs are asking for React. You're like, I just wasted a year learning JavaScript. Now you're trying to learn React, you learn React, it takes you like six months, boom, all the jobs are asking for Next.js. So you go ahead, you learn Next.js, and they're like, oh, by the way, Next.js just updated to a brand new server-based version, so now you have to relearn everything again. It feels like you're always one step behind. But if you contrast that to when I was learning web development, things did not change nearly as quickly. I mean, they were changing, the web always changes, but it didn't feel like you were always one step behind trying to catch up. It felt like, okay, I learned this thing, and now this thing is gonna be around for a long time, and I can kind of stick with this and just learn it, and I'm gonna be good for a long time. It didn't feel like things were changing like they are now. So what can you do about this situation? I mean, it doesn't matter how much you scream into the void, things are just going to keep changing and changing at the rate that they are and maybe even quicker. So how can you keep up with these changes and make sure the skills that you're learning now are going to be useful in the future? The very first thing that I recommend, and I recommend this to anyone that's learning programming, not just web development, but just focus on learning the fundamentals first. If we go back and we kind of look at all the things that have changed, you know, we have new CSS features that are added, we have new JavaScript features that are added, we have React or other component-based frameworks, and then we have frameworks built on top of frameworks. But the thing all these different things share in common is they're all built on top of the same fundamentals. They're all built on CSS, HTML, and JavaScript. So make sure you have a really under strong understanding of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And of those three, I think currently the most important to learn really well is going to be JavaScript, followed by CSS next, depending on how much you want to be in like the design side of things. 
but JavaScript is really where everything is going. Everything is built on top of JavaScript. There's backends in JavaScript, front ends, full stacks. Everything seems to be kind of moving towards JavaScript. So really make sure you have a strong understanding of the language itself, how to use it and how things work. By doing this, it's going to make learning all of these new tools much easier. Sure, there's going to be some mindset shifts you have to make, but if you have a strong understanding of JavaScript, switching to using like React or Next is going to be a much smaller hurdle than if you just jump straight into React or Next without actually learning JavaScript first. So again, focus on those fundamental skills. They take quite a while to learn, but if you learn them to the point where you really understand and master them, I promise you learning the other things like front-end frameworks is going to be so much easier. Also, let's say that you could spend a year learning JavaScript or a year learning React. If you spend a year learning JavaScript, you then have a few months that you need to take to learn React on top of that, that's okay. But if you spend a year learning React and then you find out after that year, React kind of fell out of favor and now something else has come and replaced it, you just wasted a year of your time because you still don't understand JavaScript. So if you have these fundamentals, it doesn't matter if new technologies come along, you're still going to be able to adapt your skills to those new technologies, which makes it much easier to keep up with things. Another really important thing to do is to not get overwhelmed with new things or get overwhelmed by other people that seem like they are just getting it right away. If you go onto social media, you just are bombarded by people that are like, hey, I learned web development in 0.3 seconds and now I have a job paying me a million dollars a year. Looking at this kind of stuff doesn't actually help you with learning web development. It just makes you feel like you're not smart enough, you're not good enough, like all these other people are doing it quicker, they're doing it better, why am I not able to do that? But the thing that you don't realize is those people are by far the outliers. Learning to program is not something you can do in a week or a month or even like six months. It takes a long time to truly learn how to program well. So people that are claiming that they did it incredibly quickly, sure, there may be a few people out there that can actually do that, but chances are they most likely just got really lucky or maybe they knew someone in the industry that was able to help them get a job because learning programming so quickly, it's just not something that you can realistically do. Don't feel bad if it takes you six months, a year, two years, five years to learn programming. That is 100% normal. Even me, I've been programming for 10 years and still to this day, I'm learning new stuff all the time. It seems like every other day I'm learning something new. I mean, partially it's my job to learn new things, but still there's new stuff coming out all the time. I'm constantly learning new things. So don't feel bad if you feel like you have more to learn because you're always going to have more to learn. That's really part of the joy of learning web development. Another really crucial thing you can do to make sure that you're learning things correctly is to actually try to find roadmaps that'll lead you through the path that you need to go to learn different technologies. I have a JavaScript based roadmap and I'm going to be working on a React one here fairly soon. I'll link those down in the description for you so you can check them out to kind of look at what you need to learn and in what order. But there's tons of other ones out there like the Odin project is a big one and really just any course out there. Even if you don't buy the course, I'm gonna give you my hot tip here. Just go to the table of contents of the course and look at it. It's probably going to tell you a pretty good approximation of what you need to learn and in what order to learn it. So even if you don't end up buying a course, just go and look at the table of contents. I'll link the table of contents for my JavaScript course and some of my other courses down below so you can check them out. But just looking at those table of contents and looking at different roadmaps can give you an idea of what you need to study. Because the hardest thing, in my opinion, with learning to program is knowing what to learn. There's so many things out there, things are constantly changing, it's hard to know what you don't know. So if you look at a roadmap or an outline or something like that, it'll kind of tell you the different things you need to learn so you know what you need to learn and what you don't already know so you can make sure you fit that into your studies. Now the final important thing to understand about learning to program is if you wanna be successful, you need to make sure that you make the learning process enjoyable. I don't care how you do that, but do something that makes learning to program enjoyable. Probably the best way, in my opinion, to do that is to build projects that interest you and constantly expand upon them and make them your own thing. Even if you watch a tutorial on how to build a project, take the project from that tutorial and expand on that project, add new things to it, just make it your own actual project. That's going to be the best thing that you can do to make sure that you have fun while you're programming and you're going to be learning so much more if you do something that is enjoyable to you. Now, I know when you're first getting started, it's really hard to build a project that seems enjoyable because your skills are so limited that the things that you can build are not very complex, but just try to inject some other types of hobbies that you have into whatever you're doing. As you can see by the bookshelf over here, I like to read all those books on the bottom are mine. So maybe if I was doing this, I would make something that was like a library where I could like input the books I read, and maybe give them a rating, for example. That's a fairly simple project you can build even at a fairly you know beginner skill level. And you can just remove some of the more advanced features from it. And as you start to get better and better, you can constantly add to the project until it becomes something really cool. Like maybe you get it to the point where it's like a Goodreads clone, for example, which is a much more involved project. But it started out as just a place where you can put simple, like a to-do list essentially 
essentially, but for books. Like that's how easy it started. And as your skills got better, you can expand upon it. So it always keeps you excited to learn new things because they're not just things you're learning because they're on a checklist. You're learning them because you can apply them to projects that you find interesting and cool. Now, I know I mentioned a lot of resources in this video for you to use. I'll try to link all of them down in the description below, but if I forgot any, just let me know and I'll add it in there. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.